In this tutorial, we'll look at compression using Maximus and Fruity Limiter. Our aim is to simplify the process to use the bare minimum of controls. That way we'll more quickly learn how to use them. Later we can start experimenting with other settings. Let's start with Fruity Limiter. The signal chain includes a compressor feeding a limiter. The main difference is evident as we swap between tabs. Fruity Limiter loses the ratio and knee controls and the threshold is renamed ceiling. That's because a limiter is just an extreme form of compression with the ratio set somewhere above 10 to 1. And more often these days, it's infinite. The purpose of limiting is to set the maximum ceiling of a sound, usually 0 dB or thereabouts, to prevent clipping, or it's for volume maximization. The compression ratio describes how many decibels increase you need to get one decibel increase on the output. Compression squashes the difference between the loudest and softest parts of the material. The first thing we'll do is set the ahead control to zero. Ahead in Fruity Limiter is not look ahead delay. It's a form of sustain for the compression envelope and behaves in a similar way to the attack and release settings. So we're factoring it out to keep things simple. For the compression envelope, we'll use only the attack, release and curve controls. Let's start with a kick. Note that I've already set the ratio to 20 to 1. This is the maximum, and the knee, the rate at which the ratio is reached, is at max also. This is to make the changes to the other controls more obvious for the purposes of the video. First, we'll turn down the threshold so that the input signal crosses the blue threshold line. If the signal doesn't cross the threshold line, then you're not getting compression and the white gain reduction envelope now confirms that we're compressing the signal. So let's reduce the release envelope and see what happens. Release is how quickly the compression returns to zero after being triggered. At very short settings, we get distortion. See how the compression envelope looks noisy rather than smooth? This can be a useful visual aid that your signal may be distorting, but to be sure you should always close your eyes and listen. As our goal is to compress only the transient peaks, we need to set the release short, but not so short that we get distortion. And so this is a good place to start when setting your compressor. So what about the attack setting? This is how quickly the compression is applied after the threshold is crossed. Notice what happens if I flip between a very short attack and a longer one. You can see it here in the trace. At longer settings, a little of the attack bleeds through, as there's less initial compression, so it sounds brighter. Then what's this curve for? I'll use a click to trigger it, so the shape is more obvious. I'll increase the curve setting and you can see it's a tension style control. Changing the shape to slower and more rounded with higher values. So you can trade the curve and release settings. What you use is what sounds best to you. There are no rules except distortion is bad, usually. The curve interacts with the attack also, but as the attack is usually much shorter, it's hard to see any change on the display. Listening may reveal a little more attack gets through at higher values. So let's apply what we know to a musical loop. First, down with the threshold and up with the compression ratio. The knee is at the default. I'll adjust the post compressor gain to get the apparent volume similar to what it was before compression. A little more. First, we'll find the fastest release without obvious distortion. So that sounds fairly smooth. Now the attack. It's probably a little hard to hear on the video, but it's crisper on the attack with longer settings.
Now we can also trade the curve against the attack and release values. If I set the curve to 8, I can get a shorter release value than before without obvious distortion. What sounds best? It all depends on the source material. Now let's have a look at the equivalent controls in Maximus. Attack, Release and Curve, with a head set to zero. Maximus has four separate compressor envelopes. One, each for high, mid, low and the master band. For now, we'll use the master as all bands work in the same way. But where's the threshold? It comes from the envelope on the left. Compression starts if and when the curve deviates to the right hand side of the one to one line. Expansion is anything to the left, but that's another tutorial. To get your signal in the working zone, you can lower the deviation point from 0 dB, or you can increase the input to the curve with the pre-control. I've done both. As before with Fruity Limiter, if I turn down the release too far, we get distortion. Now a control that many people overlook is the second release down here. I'll use a spike again to show the difference between release 1 and 2. Release 1 has an accelerating curve, while release 2 has a decelerating curve. Which one you use mainly comes down to how it sounds and what you're trying to achieve. And with compressors that's always the story, experimenting with what sounds best. So let's try this on our loop. I'll lower the threshold. And turn the pre up a little, so we're getting enough compression to make things obvious. As before, we get distortion if the release is too short. And we can trade attack and release values against curve. I'll copy the value across to release 2, and I'll try that. And again, we can trade this against the first curve value. With that, we hope that keeping things simple will help you to get a head start with Fruity Limiter and Maximus. Enjoy! Enjoy.